how how our game views very fair with you. I'd like to read you a story called Mr. Twiddle Gets a Shock. Mr. Twiddle was always doing something silly. Well, did you ever hear the tale of what happened when he threw his best handkerchief into the fire by mistake? I'll tell you, it happened one morning when Mr. Twiddle was opening his letters by the kitchen fire. You can throw the envelope into the fire, said Mrs. Twiddle. It will save me fetching the waste paper basket. Well, Mr. Twiddle, at that moment, felt he was going to sneeze. So with an envelope in one hand and his best white silk handkerchief in the other, he sat in his chair waiting for the sneeze to come. And when did it come? At tissue. Mr. Twiddle caught the sneeze in the envelope and threw his handkerchief quite by mistake into the fire. Well, of course he was terribly upset. As soon as he had done this and tried to rake to his handkerchief out of the fire, a bit of burning coal fell onto the rug and scorched the hole at once. Mrs. Twiddle came running in when she smelled the smell of burning and how she scolded. Mr. Twiddle, catching a sneeze in an envelope and throwing your best handkerchief on the fire, she snorted, pouring water onto the burning rug. Whatever will you do next, Twiddle? Don't you know the difference between a handkerchief and an envelope? You'll be poking the fire with your pencil and, and trying to write with the poker next. You might have had the whole house on fire. Go out for a walk, do, and don't come in till dinner time. Poor Mr. Twiddle. He was really very unhappy about his best handkerchief. He got up, found his hat, put it on back to front and went into the village. And very soon he met old Mrs. Gabble, who always loved to chat. When she saw Mr. Twiddle looking so upset, she stopped. What's the matter? She said. Oh, said Mr. Twiddle. A dreadful thing happened this morning. I threw my handkerchief on, on the fire by mistake and it got burned. And when I tried to get it out of the flames, some burning coal fell onto the carpet. And good gracious me, said Mrs. Gamble. No wonder you feel upset. Then she caught sight of Sally Simple and she hurried to tell her the news. But of course, she added a bit to it to make it even more exciting. Oh, Sally Simple, she cried. Have you heard it? What happened at the Twiddle's house this morning? Why poor old Twiddle threw his handkerchief on the fire by mistake? In getting it out, the fire fell onto the rug and set it all ablaze. 
goodness me, said Sally quite frightened. I did the kitchen catch a light. I, I expect so, said Mrs. Gamble happily. Oh yes, I am sure it blazed up onto the ceiling. Sally Simple was thrilled she long to talk to someone about the fire at the twiddles. She saw a dame shoe over the way and rushed to tell her. Oh, dame shoe, she cried. Have you heard of the terrible fire at poor Mrs. Twiddles this morning? No, said Dame Shoe Starfle. What about it? Oh, Mr. Twiddle dropped his handkerchief in the fire and it started a dreadful burning, said Sally Simple. Yes, and the rug caught fire and the flame shut up. Up onto the ceiling. The whole kitchen was on fire. But how dreadful, said Dame Shoe. I suppose the house will be burnt down. Yes, sure to be, said Sally Simple. I do wonder if the fire engines have gone to see it. And don't you think we ought to offer to give the twiddles a bed for tonight Beca because with their house burnt down they'll have nowhere to sleep. Yes, yes, said Dame Shoe. I'll go and tell everyone else, Sally, and we'll see what we can do. She hurried off longing to tell someone the news. On the way, she passed the fire station. She peeped inside and to her very great surprise, she saw the big fire engine still there. It hadn't gone to the twiddles. I say, I say, cried Dame Shoe, rushing into the great into the fire station in a great hurry. Haven't you heard of the dreadful fire at the Twiddles house? It will be burnt to nothing if you don't hurry at once. First we've heard of it, cried the captain of the fire brigade, and he sounded the big fire bell at once. In three minutes, Every fireman was in his place complete with helmets, with a laugh, with a laugh, with a loud clanging of bells, the great red fire engine roared out, out of the building. Clang, clang, clang. It sped away to Mr. Twiddle's house. Everyone ran after it to see where it was going. It stopped outside Mr. Twiddle's house. Barry, can we use pause for a second? The story? Why? Because they need to use the bar in this room. We can go back to the other room if you want to. Barry, consider it. I'm going to have to start this. Or over again. Yeah, we can pause it and we can um, put the two videos together. Everyone ran after it to see where it was going. It stopped outside Mr. Twiddle's house. The fireman untied the long hose and looked for the fire. Mrs. Twiddle looked out of the window. She saw the fire engine. She saw the fireman unwinding the hose. She saw the crowds and crowds of people. 
whatever had become all crumbled. She opened the door and looked out. Hi, Mrs. Twiddle. Where's the fire? shouted the moon. What fire? asked Mrs. Twiddle in the greatest astonishment. The fire would come put out, said the moon. Well, there's only one fire in the house, and that's in the kitchen grate, said Mrs. Twiddle, even more astonished. And I'm sure I don't want that put out, thank you. At that moment, Mr. Twiddle walked up, looking as surprised as he could be to see such a crowd around his house. You said there was a terrible fire in your house, cried Dame Shoe. I didn't, said Mrs. Twiddle ingrantly. You did, shouted everyone. I only told Mrs. Gabble I am burnt my handkerchief by mistake, shouted Mr. Twiddle, and he went inside and banged the door. The fire engine turned around and drove off in disgust. Everyone went home. Mrs. Twiddle stared at Mr. Twiddle crossly. Do you need to bring the fire engine here and up in town just because you happen to have burnt your handkerchief, she said. Really, Mr. Twiddle, please don't do any more foolish things today. Don't worry, I shan't, said Mr. Twiddle gloomily, and he threw his hat into the waste paper basket and hung up his newspaper on a peg. Well, really, Mr. Twiddle. And that is the end of the story. Next time on, on my storytelling, it will be chapter three Mr. Twiddle fetches a fish. I'm Barry Fair. Thanks for watching today and I will catch you next time.